Researchers such as John Levi, Martin Leidke and others have repeatedly pointed out that almost all of the photographs from the 1800s seem to have the sky purposely doctored to blur it out. Notice how you can never see any clouds, distant hills or land on the horizon, the sun even, and on some of them you can even see the sloppy pixelated cuts around the buildings. Are they purposely hiding something? And if so, what and why? We have also noticed that churches and older structures around Scandinavia, and the rest of the world for that matter, all have large open belfries, but with no bells in them. They also seem to have human-sized arches and platforms, much like old skyscrapers and towers such as the Empire State Building and the Eiffel Tower. They have them very near the top. Is it possible both questions have the same simple answer? As always, the topics we touch on in our videos are our own musings and should be taken as such. Do your own research and come to your own conclusions. There was obviously something in the skies that they didn't want us to see. Were there commonplace atmospheric anomalies that would seem strange to us today? Were there literally no clouds or sun? Were there flying rainbow unicorns? Probably not. But what if the skies were full of airships? This might sound absurd at first, but consider this. All of the old world maps made by the early to late 1500 cartographers are in perfect proportions with modern maps that are allegedly done by aerial photography and satellite imagery. They even have major and minor rivers mapped out in dense, impenetrable jungle and forest regions. They even have coastlines and areas mapped out in places we had allegedly never even discovered or explored at that time. The only way this could be done is from the air. You would need a craft that can go slow enough to map out the terrain, fly high enough for area perspective, and low enough to see details. You would also need a whole fleet of these to map out the whole world. But where would you keep or moor them in the 1500s? One possible answer lies in the larger antique buildings and churches here in Copenhagen, and actually in other cities on every continent around the world. If you're new to Tatarian mud flood research, there is mounting evidence that most of these old buildings are much, much older than the late 17 or 1800s, as is claimed by lamestream history, possibly hundreds of years older. As you can see from these images, all of these older buildings and churches have basically the same mechanical structures on their roofs, albeit in many differing designs. The aerial, the ball, the 360 degree openings, or sometimes the fenced off landing platforms. We call these towers belfries, yet strangely, most of them have no bells, or even the mechanical framework to hang them on. Why would this design of towers be universal across the country, and as you will see later on, also across the world? Did these people have bats in their belfries? Or did they have blimps on their belfries? The largest and most important buildings in these cities seem to have the most mooring points on them, for various size airships and would be obvious recognizable landmarks for inbound pilots. We can imagine several different scenarios. Larger airships with many passengers and large cargo would unload on the ground and then pilots and crew would moor the ship on the tower and disembark via a gangplank into the human size openings in these towers. 
Another scenario would be the bus stop analogy, where certain passengers would disembark down a gangplank through the tower and the airship could move on quickly to the next destination. If we look at these towers, there is always a large antenna with a ball, perfect for mooring and keeping the ship tethered. As no one can predict the direction of the wind, it would make sense to have multiple openings 360 degrees around the tower, as they all do. Most of these towers have a smaller top belfry with windows too small to walk through, but perfect for a landing technician for sighting and mooring. If this theory is correct, then we can also see that it wasn't just the largest and most important buildings that had this technology, but private residences also had mooring points for smaller airships on their roofs. There is a theory that these buildings doubled as atmospheric energy harvesters, and for all we know, they were also recharging these airships while moored and that this free energy technology may be part of the reason they could be hiding the existence of these once commonplace airships. Which brings us to structures such as the Eiffel Tower, the Blackpool Tower and the thousands of other towers around the world. Also with platforms, mooring architecture and possible atmospheric harvesting technology. Could this be what they were really built for? As John Levi points out, most of our train stations seem to have pointless high hangar shaped roofs and open halls, unless in fact that is exactly what they were, airship hangars and airports with connecting hubs to trains. If you Google Tesla today, you will get Elon Musk and his energy and resource guzzling electric cars, and very little on the electrical genius who was Nikola Tesla, as if he is being deliberately deleted from history. Airships used to be called Zephyrs, and just like today, the Rockefeller, Ford, Vanderbilt, oil, steel and railroad barons started naming cars and trains Zephyr, just as petroleum-based ground travel started replacing air travel. This amazing green, clean, quiet mode of travel was obviously not profitable to the oil barons and needed to go. These airships were actually still quite commonplace even in the early 1900s as we can see here. As we know, alcohol prohibition was really about removing natural plant-based fuels like ethanol, so that the automotive industry had to rely on profitable big oil for fuel. But how would you eliminate your biggest competitors that can fly without the use of petroleum-based fuel? By scaring the shit out of everyone to ever set foot on one of these airships again. False flag anyone? That crash single-handedly ended the passenger airship industry. How convenient. Getting back to the 1800s and the blanked out sky photographs, there is a very curious anomaly when we watch the alleged footage of the Wright brothers' first flight in 1903. You would think that if you were watching the first ever manned airplane flight, still thought to be impossible at the time and the greatest achievement in history, you would be watching intently with a look of wonderment on your face, not wanting to miss a single second. 
but like the Zapruda film also shows people looking uninterested in any direction but the most popular president in history's motorcade, the Wright brothers' spectators seem to be equally disinterested and unenamored. Hey Bob, let's go grab some lunch while these guys try to get that wooden contraption off the ground. While there is a theory out there that says that entire flight was faked Hollywood-style production using models, another explanation could be that it was actually commonplace to see flying machines in the sky, and therefore no big deal to see a several hundred foot low altitude flight. Musings or not, the evidence seems to point in this direction. Were we flying across the Atlantic in the 14 or 1500s, as the old maps seem to suggest? Why did they blur out the skies in the 1800s? Why are there no bells in the so-called belfries? And how the hell did they get that up there, if not by air? <laughs>